achieve the ultimate transformation in existence. Giga. Get your Giga Poppy merch today. I have a variety of different shirts and sweaters, all in different colors and sizes. Check out the Poppy Polite merch at bonfire.com slash poppy dash polite dash merch. Link in the description of this video. Dragon Quest 10 Online Tips and Tricks for Beginners. So, first things first, play this game in English, darn nabbit. Check out dq 10 abbycom to get started with downloading the English tools. Do it! Come on! Join us! Join us! <laughs> Okay, so I've got 10 tips and tricks for you guys. Keep in mind, I'm still playing the trial version of this game. I'm still in version one currently as of this recording, but I have learned a thing or two from playing for the last couple months that I thought I could share that could be useful. So that's what this video is about. And number one out of 10 is, so when you first start the game, uh, and you actually get in, you will have the option to skip the tutorial of this game. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, so you can, if you want to, obviously, but I personally think you shouldn't, uh, because it's pretty freaking awesome, especially if you want to really get into this game and, you know, get the story down and actually like, you know, learn how to the basics of it. This is a really good way to learn the basics of the game. Everything will come, you know, with time. You'll, you, this game's, this is a huge game. So might as well really take in, soak it in as they say. And so I definitely say, say just play the tutorial. Uh, again, you'll learn a lot of the basics. Uh, this game is very different to the other mainline games. So I definitely recommend playing the tutorial, not skipping it. And again, it, it's beneficial overall for many, many reasons. So there you go. Number one. Number two, even without the English tools, from what I've noticed, uh, it's the game is very uh, like visually, um, what's it called? Visually generous if that makes sense so for example when you are doing a quest uh, a quest marker will appear on on your map to tell you exactly where you need to go uh so it's very easy for you to be able to learn exactly where you need to go so it's very nice uh in terms of like visual sort of like helpfulness if that makes sense the only time that the quest marker will not show up is if you have not been to the area that you need to go to if that makes sense so yeah so you'll learn that'll happen to you and basically it'll, it'll still be able to help you guide you to the right direction uh but yeah so definitely pay attention to the quest marker uh which will help you out moving forward number three is before you fight monsters in this game, I recommend going up to it and you have an option to like click on the monster from far away. Uh, and it will actually tell you if the monster seems pretty weak, if it's uh, probably best not to mess with it, or if it's too strong sort of thing. It'll actually tell you, you know, what kind of like, how strong the monster is. So this is really helpful because this is an open world. Like this is a huge, I mean, it's not technically open world, but, uh, or maybe it is, I don't know. Basically this game is huge and the game, the, in terms of balancing, it's, it's not like, basically it's an MMO, right? I mean, the monsters are going to be different levels in, in even beginner areas. Like, so you just need to be very careful. And this is a way for you to be able to actually tell, like, can I fight this monster or not? Or am I going to get completely annihilated? So that's very, that's very nice. The only thing is just be, just be careful because 
if you get close enough, a lot of the times the monsters will see you and they'll run after you. So <laughs> just be very careful. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, so there's that. Number four uh, tip is make friends in this game. Trust me, this game is one hundred thousand bajillion percent better with friends. I have had so many fun, fun, fun experiences with a lot of friends that I've made while I've been playing this game. Uh, I got into it with a couple buddies. And then after that, um, I've made a ton of friends while I've been, you know, while I've played this game. So definitely, definitely, uh, you know, make friends uh, and, and play with friends. It's so much better with friends. Now, if you're asking, you know, how, how do I make friends? Easy. Go to the Discord, the Dragon Quest 10 official Discord. There is so much people that play this game. So many. And every there's a lot of people always looking for people to play with. So definitely check out that Discord. Okay, number five tip. Level up your basic vocations before choosing which one you want to use for a while. Get to unlock all of the permanent buffs, passive buffs, that are available for each basic vocation before choosing which weapon you want to use. So I just read that basically, but I'll, I'll explain it a little bit better. So basically, um, this game is all about vocations, which is amazing. I love vocations. Um, but there's six different basic vocations before you can start getting uh, intermediate or advanced vocations. Um, the basic vocations are minstrel, priest, mage, thief, warrior, martial artist. Okay, so each basic vocation, uh, if you've played Dragon Quest IX, you'll know a little bit about this, but um, each basic vocation has different skill points, different uh, skills that you can put your skill points into. So my recommendation, just so that you're, um, you kind of get a mix of being able to play as every basic vocation and then also uh, being able to get actual passive buffs from each basic vocation is don't level up any weapons in the beginning of the game when you're when you're going through your basic vocations. I would actually recommend, uh, which I've been told myself, shout out to Red and other uh, members of the community, but level up the skill that's specific to that vocation. Um, so <clears throat> go to that skill and then you'll see that once you get to about 80-ish or 90 skill points, there's, there's well, but even before that, but the, the, that'll be the last passive permanent buff you can get for that specific vocation. So in other words, that those buffs, those skills, you will be able to keep on your character even without changing, even with changing your vocation. So doing this will help you better see what kind of uh, vocation you want to be. You can equip many different weapons while you're doing this. So you get, you get to kind of see, you know, which weapons you like better. Uh, some are better than others, especially with different vocations and stuff, which you'll eventually get to learn anyways. Um, but yeah, and then this will help your character once you actually choose the actual vocation you want to play as for a long time. This will make your character much more, uh, you know, much better, much higher resilience, much higher strength, agility or deafness, uh, HP, a lot of stuff. So this will help your 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 character be way buffer. <laughs> than than anybody else basically uh because you'll have like an edge a way bigger a, a better head start when you choose your actual uh vocation so anyways hopefully that makes sense number six ask if you have any questions or doubts or need a little guidance again join the damn dq10 discord information on how to join that discord is in the description below 
You can just head to the to the website dq10abby.com as well to get access to that Discord. But definitely join the Discord. Ask questions. Trust me. Even if you feel like they're a dumb question, I have asked many, many questions. And I have had so much of the people there, you know, help me and answer or, you know, be able to find out how to do things. So definitely ask questions. It will be super helpful. <laughs> Number seven. If you want to play on your own, totally cool. I have many times where I just play on my own. Um, and you want to play with your support party, right? So you have a support party um, that you'll get access to once you beat the village story. Your your main, your where you start off after the tutorial. Once you beat that story, you'll get access to the main, uh, you know, you'll get access to your support party, basically. Uh, <clears throat> once you beat that uh, and you want to eventually get new support party members um, to help you out because the thing is the the initial support party members are up to level 18 I believe and they're very limited to uh, to that because of that basically so uh, and you can't level up your support party um, if you've played Dragon's Dogma it's kind of like that sort of thing where you you need to get new pawns uh, new support party members every time like you level up a couple times it's recommended to do that obviously so um anyways so you need to complete a quest to be able to get stronger support party members the quest is number 31 shout out to shobu for uh this information shobu blaze he is the man so yeah so there you go this will be very helpful um because eventually, especially once you start leveling up, or even if you start choosing, you know, different vocations, you'll want to have, you you know, you'll want to test out different support party members and even higher leveled ones. And so this will be very helpful to be able to have a better support uh, party. Okay, number eight tip is do the Strike Force Daily Quests, yo. They will help you level up like cray cray. So go to this guy. He'll be in every every village, every town. Uh, go up to him. Talk to him. You could do this once a day. Choose the one that you want to do. Uh, obviously, make sure that you have access to that location or that area. Um, and then do that every single day. That will help you level up your vocations and you know all that stuff so definitely do those and you'll also get gold and even a, an extra little item because you did it so definitely a very useful thing to do <clears throat> number nine get your freaking third zoom stone so once you get to the bigger village you'll get access to getting your second zoom stone uh, i believe correct me if i'm wrong somebody you know that knows but to get your third zoom stone, you have to do a quest to get it. And trust me, you'll want to do this because there is something called the mega zoom stone, but you won't have access to that until version three of the game. So yeah, definitely get this third zoom stone. To get the third zoom stone, you need to complete quest number 35. So just follow the quest mo markers to get to everywhere that you need to get to for this quest, but definitely do this because it'll be very useful, um, you know, for this game. This game, unfortunately, you do not have access to the spell zoom. You need to use zoom stones. So that's why getting a third one will be very, very, very useful uh, while you're playing version one and two. So there you go. Okay, number 10 tips and trick. You can actually filter the quests that you want to do by going to this area in your menu. This will be very helpful because you can actually check to see which quests you can do where and where they are located on in the world. You know, you might be in the exact town that you'll be able to, you know, do specific quests in. Uh, this is where you'll actually be able to filter and find uh, how useful the quests are 
um, you know, which quest you might be looking for a specific quest. This is where you can find uh, where you can actually go to to get the quest that you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, this is very useful uh, to be able to identify exactly where you need to go to get the exact quests that you need or want. And if you're just trying to find quests to do, this is a great way to do that as well. That's that's how I do it. I just kind of find, I'll go to a specific town and then I'll see what quests are available. But, uh, you know, this will give you more information instead of just looking at the little exclamation point on the, on the when you open up the map. So it's very useful. So anyways, those are my... 10 tips and tricks for beginners for Dragon Quest 10. Shout out to freaking this community. Shout out to Shobu. He has been so freaking helpful for me. Uh, shout out to Red. Red has been playing this game for a while and has helped me out with so many different uh, things on this game. Shout out to Excellent as well. I, you know, thank you so much for helping me do, you know, understand where to get pictures and stuff like that. And many other things. Uh, shout out to this community as a whole. You guys are all incredible. I love this experience of DQ10 because of you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. I can do another video which gives even more tips and tricks if this is something that you would uh, like for me to do. So definitely let me know if this if you found this useful at all. Uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that. So. Thanks guys again for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Here's a quick message from today's sponsor. Me. <laughs> guys, consider supporting me on Patreon so you can start earning mini medals that you can exchange for incredible prizes like Dragon Quest merch, games, figurines, and gaming systems like Nintendo Switch or PlayStation 5. I'm trying to raise funds to hire artists so I can take my personal Dragon Quest project more seriously. I've got many ideas in mind like creating a manga series and also a card game. I've got multiple tiers available that you can sign up for. Any support is very much appreciated.